Hello, uh, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanters channel. So um, yesterday I went to uh, the Bakehouse Antique Centre in Northampton and uh, yeah, there, there wasn't as much glass as there was last time. Uh, they've obviously sold some and also there was some that I saw again so there wasn't as much to play with but um, yeah, it, it was a real voyage of discovery um, and I'll talk about bit more about that after you've seen what I found. Um, what was nice, there was some very nice furniture there. Yeah, I don't normally see that much good furniture there. Um, uh, and also there was a lot of mid-century stuff. There was a, quite a lot of Urkel, interesting Urkel. Um, so if you're into that, yeah, it's a good spot to go there now because they've got quite a bit of it. And um, so anyway, with that said, we will um, get on with the video and I hope you enjoy it. So I'm here in Northampton to uh, film at the uh, Bakehouse Antique Centre in Abington Street in um, Northampton and um, yeah, you know you're here because it's got this uh, rather distinct feature just outside and it is a side street so there is. Yeah, oh we've got a big van going by but yeah, you get the idea and um, yeah, so here we go. I've, I've not been in but they, they know me and um, I've, been, I've said I'm coming today so I'll uh, go and have a chat and start poking around. I'm in the entrance and um, yeah, spotted something immediately. Um, as I said, I like labels. I see these things around. Do you remember? I, I've hired them before and I've always said they're Murano. And there you go, in um, big writing Murano, made in Italy. Yeah, some things can say secretly say Murano style or have Italian names on, but they don't necessarily necessarily mean anything because it doesn't say made in Italy. Sometimes you need to figure things out. On that label it said Vetro Esequito Secondo la Tecnica del Mastro de, de, de Murano. And what that means is glass made, in, made according to the technique of the Murano masters. That's not saying it's made in Murano. <laughs> um, so yeah, it is made in Italy, but um, not made in Murano. And uh, in here is a tail because at the very end I found another piece of glass with even more information on it. And um, yeah, so stay to the end if you want to know um, the resolution of this mystery. Or alternatively, just jump to the end. This is a strange thing. Unusual vessel. Yeah, it is unusual. I've not seen that before. So um, that's a sort of like loose stopper in the top. It's a bit weird. Um, it's not much else in my glass. No. Glass badger. I think they're Wedgwood or somebody like that. But I don't know. I'll keep going. But you get the idea. Um, this place is like a little rabbit warren. I'll just Put down there, there you go. Look at that. Haven't gone very far. Um, just noticing this cabinet here is a copy of a Jacob book glass. So, it, in form, it, it looks like a early 19th century one, but the, the foot compared to the, and it's not just the angle, it's much smaller than the bowl, um, and it just looks too the foot looks too cleanly made. He says Victorian, he might be right, because it's not super cleanly made, but more cleanly made than um, if it was a Georgian one. He's got a few other bits and pieces here. He's got a nice big goblet there. 30 pounds, 1850s. I think that probably might be about right. Late Victorian glass, yeah. About right with that as well. Okay, I'll move on. Some pieces here. Press glass, that is. Obviously, that's Luminarch. Oh, that's nice. That's a from a Tantalus. Can you see the way the bottom's clear? Because they, they've cut it down to there because there's the frame of the Tantalus hides the bottom half. So why would you cut that? Some of them are cut all the way down, but some of them are not. But that highlights that that is from a Tantalus, if it's got that clear base like that. 
Um, yeah, look at this, this is quite cool. Um, what a dish, eight pounds. Yeah, that's quite unusual. I don't recognize that. I might have a quick shifty and see if I can find it. Looks very 50s, the pattern, maybe earlier. But um, yeah, I'll move on. Just on the other side of the aisle, there's this little vase here. I noticed it's got 12 pounds on it, um, but it's signed Matafa. So that's from Malta. So I thought I'd have a quick look at Matafa glass, and there's a couple of really distinct things that they do. I mean, it doesn't look anything like the Medina stuff, um, none of the same colours, but the thing that stands out to me are these funny little squidgy, like toothpaste like um, vases and then the vase like the one that I saw where they split the top open and, and make it into little petals like there's another one there's an, another one you can see it quite clearly so yeah they have their own style that's a bit different some of it is you know what you'd kind of expect but those two little bits the the ones with the split tops and the ones that are like toothpaste, that's their own thing. I've not seen that anywhere else. And I'm back because they moved on. Um, yeah, I don't know who did this, but yeah, there's a bit of white fries just there. I might look that one up. So I'm looking at the uh, whitefriesglass.com website, the catalogues. And uh, this is the catalogue for 1964, and um, it's this one here, uh, the 9571. So, um, yeah, that's the bars that we were looking at, so definitely white fries. And this is the first year it appears, 1964. So, um, that's quite, and the previous one was 1961, so you've got quite a close date there. This is here, it's a bit of quality glass there. Don't know who did that though, with a little cranberry 54 pound. Oh, oh, it's got a silver holder. William Commons 1900, so that's nice to see a date on something. Yeah, I don't know who did the swallow. Or oh, the paperweight. What else have we got here? Got a Davidson, Chippendale. Bowl there. Yeah, don't recognise this. Another bit of cranberry. Yeah, a bunch of bits and pieces in here. Nothing's popping out. Um, these are Romanian. And a couple of cranberry glasses. So I know I keep saying things are Romanian and you might not believe me. Uh, I have seen things with labels on, but I don't have any book references. But if I go here, look if I can find the pointer. Here we go, here's a Romanian um, glass basket. Um, there's another one. And they're made the same way as that one. There's another one. Um, and another one, let me see if I scroll right. Yeah, that one's, that one's a bit different. Any more, for any more. Um, if I scroll up. I can find you some more here. Let's see. There's a nice blue one that's a bit similar. Um, that's another one. Um, look, there's a, another one there. That's a, quite a fancy one. But you get the idea. Um, it's a kind of common form. You just get used to seeing shapes because you just see so many of them. A Maltese bottle here. Um, I think I've highlighted before you can see the little seal on it. Let's see if I can get my finger in there. there. That little seal there. It's got a little cross on it. Can you see that? If I get as close as I can. And um, yeah, so that's what so that means. It's Medina. That's their symbol. They don't put it on everything, but if you see it, you know it's Medina. There's not sure of anything else that's particularly looking, looking, can't see anything. 
that he knows what he's talking about. Oh, that's a Polish Josephina. That's pretty modern. Um, back here has really changed. Since I was here last time, there's a few bits of... There's some interesting furniture in here. Um, that's nice. Ebonized piece. What's this? What's this urn? That cut. Oh, that's cut. Glass bomb bomb dish and cover. Might have to um, stop. Oh, by the way, just. Yeah, I think that's probably Czech. But I will. Have a poke. It might be Japanese because they did a lot of this graduated stuff. I don't think it's. Um, might be Murano, but I don't think so. So I've had a look at this. There's no, there's no price on it, um, but it does have a major issue in that the whole finial has been off at some point and glued with the not very transparent glue. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to guess how long that is. It's really heavy, so I don't think it's Georgian. Um, might be a Victorian one because it's got plenty of wear on the base of the foot and the way the. The star cut and the foot, it looks very Victorian. So there's not much glass in this rebuilt bit, but if you're from Northampton, this is cool. This is this is local. I'm not sure exactly where Pico Ware was made, but it is local. Um, it's aluminium, post-war design. What's really nice about this, the price is very decent, it's £55. Never seen it with a tray. Look at the tray with the aluminium sides and everything. Really nice and it's in really decent condition, this one. Um, it's marked underneath. It says Pico Web. Uh, made in England. So yeah. With your coffee pot, teapot, cream and sugar. That is super cool mid-century piece. Super cool. So I thought I'd have a quick punt on the internet just to make sure I wasn't talking crap there. Uh, Pico Ware, yep, yeah, is made in Northampton. And there you go, Northampton. It was made from 1947 to 1980. Um, I have read somewhere else that the factory burned down in 1980. Um, there's a, and then after that there was a foundry um, in Scotland that was making and refurbing them. I don't know if they're still going now. But, um, yeah, it's, it's very sad that stuff like that was made in the UK. Cool stuff. And um, now it's gone. But um, that was a really nice set there. Best I've seen. A couple of interesting bits of domestic glass here. Um, yeah, they're only pressed. These are wasp traps. You uh, stick a cork in, in the top, hang it up. You see the string around the neck there? Put a bit of string around it, hang it up from a tree or something. Um, you put some water in the bottom there, a little bit of jam or something, and the wasps fly up through the hole in the bottom and um, go and drown themselves in it. So you end up with a big sludge. Don't know what RBS stands for, but um, yeah, they're quite interesting. Funny little thing there, don't know. Nothing else. Uh, yeah. What's this? That's pressed. That's probably Davidson. I've seen that colour. It's like little bowls and things with Davidson on them. Yeah. Nothing else. Stops the camera and realises he's completely blind. Didn't spot these. Um, Coronation, 1937. Um, Ten pounds for that plate for 1987, and there's another one here. Another oh, silver wedding. What silver wedding would that be? Oh, it's got a big crack through it. Prince and Princess of Wales. Yeah, but which Prince and Princess of Wales? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you got to look at that. Uh, yeah, I think that would be George the Fifth then, probably, that Prince of Wales. 
1888. It does have a crack in it, but I think that's probably a rare thing. Uh, so it's the same price as the one without the crack. The book I'm looking at here is The Peacock and the Lions by Sheila Murray. Um, so the answer is anybody could have made those. I found, I haven't found exact matches for those, but we've got this Victoria Jubilee from 1887 by Matthew Turnbull. In another book I just looked up, there was also another Victoria Jubilee um, plate with a different pattern on it with Queen Victoria, but still this kind of lettering um, for 1887 as well. And um, yeah, that one was by, I think that one was by Sowerby. So probably everybody was having a pop, pop at these, um, all the press glass makers are probably having a pop at these um, commemorative plates, etc. cetera. Um, so yeah, it's difficult. Um, yeah, the one thing about this book that I really like is, um, yeah, the author, Sheila Murray, look at this lady here. She's there in the back. How can you not trust this lady? Yeah. Um, how can you not trust her? This book must be good. Just did a video on ships to Candace and here's one here. It says it's Webb Corbett. Quality's decent. It's about, I think it is supposed to be a ship's decanter. But he's saying it's Webb Corbett. Does that mean it's marked? Um, looking very carefully. Looking even more carefully. Oh, yes, it is just here. Um, it's so faint, you can just see where the light's shining through it there. And it's like a half circle with Webb Corbett written in it. Well spotted, that dealer. So, the book I'm looking at here is A British Glass Between the Wars by Roger Dodsworth. And here is the mark that we were just looking at. So that dates it uh, 1930 to 1947, so it's nice and early um, for a marked piece like that. So that's, that's nice. It's probably pre-war, I would say, though. So I'll come right into the back of this place. Um, there's one of those ones with a textured. I think, has it got a mark? What does it say? Let me stop a second, I'm going to read that. Well, a disaster's happened, so I have no idea now. So these ones, yeah, these are not Belgium. These are made in France. I've got made in France written underneath them. And these ones, these ones are not Belgium because they've got made in Italy written in them. So it looks like everybody's making these things with these textured rings on and gold bands. Um... You know, all you can really say is, yeah, they're continental. That's a real pain. I was hoping to be able to help people ID some of this stuff, and, yeah, I don't feel like I've moved forward at all. Yeah, I said I'm pained, and I really am, because you see so much of that textured stuff with gold bands, and I was hoping, yeah, I'm going to give you some sort of definitive and maybe do a video on it and blah, 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 but it's all over the shop. Someone has told me that some of it's made in America as well. So what a pain. I'm going to try and build up a, some sort of database, see if I can find stuff with labels on and try and see if there's any kind of differentiation I can make out. But those, those two sets of shot glasses are not really that different from each other. You know what I mean? They, they're kind of like one band, one gold ring, uh, only the shapes were different, but not drast drastically different sizes or anything. So, yeah, what a pain. Um, but I'll keep working on that. I'm not going to give up. I'm, I'm, if I can create some sort of definitive answer to at least some of it, I will do a video on it. So here we go. Keep going. In here, there's some glasses. They look like... Stuart Crystal Stratford. I don't think these ones are. The colour of them doesn't look right. They feel a bit greasy. And yeah, they're not ringing at all. 
so um, they're not lead crystal I think these are probably made by um, Dima and, uh, yeah there's nothing else really exciting here yeah see those are even though they're quite thick they ring sorry I've got my hand in the way but um, yeah there's nothing let me go back a bit and I've got some more things with silver rings on uh, yeah I don't want to ignore them that's the thing that's just got blue paint on it um, so has this got anything written on it no these are nice Ooh. there's no price on them but they're very nice quality shot glasses completely cut surface there yeah they're nice um, yeah they'd be late 20th century I think what else is here yeah probably a bit of pre-war press glass there anything back over this end of the room um, got a Davidson Jacobean jug there that's pre-war pattern um, that's a Dartington bowl just there um, and a caseless bowl just in front of it there yeah, I don't know that one's got a label on it it's healthy says hand cut but that's not useful um, and there's this that's probably 1930s it looks very deco-y uh, that bowl but I don't recognise it at all and I don't recognise the jug behind it either everything is packed in here um, there is a nice I can't even get to or see the label on Caithness Warbler bars there see with his tail up um, yeah oh nice Georgian corner cupboard there that's really nice in oak but there's not any glass any other glass that I can see got some um, Pyrex the Pyrex made in England yeah they're all grey though they're not like the exciting coloured ones I've seen before it says JAJ um, so that was the plastic maker for the Pyrex ones but it doesn't actually have Pyrex it just says JAJ made in England so I might try and find out who JAJ is um, but it's the same pattern as the Pyrex ones that I saw before. So I'm living and learning here. JAJ, and it actually says JAJ Pyrex. Didn't that J stands for J Joblings, so Joblings glassware. Um, yeah, so they were making Pyrex. They are making it under license from the American Pyrex company. So that's really interesting. So, um, because I always thought of Jobling as mating kind of glass kind of glass that um, Lalique was making like a cheaper version but they were clearly doing other stuff and um, yeah so it's interesting that some of them say Pyrex and some of them say JAJ um, so I'm wondering if the ones with Pyrex written on them were imported um, but then the plastic with them says JAJ so yeah interesting relationships going on there between different companies a few other bits. Looks very empoly. Um, yeah, that's just 70s press glass, so I'll move on. Sorry about the music. Um, it ships to canter in the back there, but um, stop is not right. So, this thing here, that's for um, a hooker pipe. Can you see the way the top is? Where it's got this little bit here that's where your hooker hangs in and you have your water in there and it bubble through it um, but yeah so that goes with the hooker pipe if you see that selling as a bottle or a decanter whatever it's actually the base of a hooker pipe uh, Murano 
Oh, and another piece. Yeah. Two bits of Murano here. Don't know how that old they are, but I have seen those with labels on. So I know what they are. There's a, bit, a big bit of lacy pressed glass in there, but I don't recognize it. You've got um, Romanian fish. It's a big one and he's 12 pounds. So that's a really good one. And um, look at this nice bit of Murano. I need to reach over. I'm this far away. <laughs> Reaching over. Um, might have to go and try and see what, what price he's got on that. Oh, and a bit of Mary Gregory at the top there. So he's got it down as an LC um, 90 pounds. It's Murano. Um, but it's probably still £90 because it's a really good quality piece. Um, so notice this here, a bit of Medina, with the label still on, so that's really nice to see. Come upstairs. Um, don't know what that is. Might be Mo Bohemian, it's very simple though. Um, piece of case glass, that looks like it's Empoli, but lead crystal these are nice pieces of uranium glass there they look to be late Victorian and um, five pounds they're a real bargain a bit behind that looks early 20th century. That's another piece of uranium, that jug. So you got, let me go around the other side. 10 pounds on that, so that's good. That's hand blown. I can see the Pontal mark on it. Um, the brown ones there, those are Luminarch. Don't know who those are. Some more uranium glass here. Um, more Luminarch. I think there's a raven head. I think this is a um, Sowerby. This is interesting down here. I don't recognize it. It's 10 pounds as well. Well, such a, that's a really big bowl. So, uh, yeah, I'll try and find that one. That's quite interesting. <coughs> I think I pulled away from here too fast because um, you can hardly see it. It's very, Pattern is a bit delicate. This glass here, I think that's a Ravenhead, Alexander Harley Williamson one. I think it's a a chunky, as opposed to a chubby, because it's fat at the bottom, so it's a chunky. What I'm looking at here is 20th century glass by Andy McConnell, and um, yeah, I don't know. I keep coming back to this page with the different shapes on, um, but if I'm going to learn them, you're going to learn them too. So this is what we were looking at. It's a chunky. You can see where it's a little bit fat at the bottom. The chubby is just like lip side here. So yeah, um, that's the one it is. Um, the one, the other one you see a lot of is the Slim Jims, um, but none today. But we did see a chunky. Um, and in fact, this design is the similar, a bit of a delicateness about it, apart from the red bits. Um, but that one did. But anyway, there you go. Alexander Hardy Davidson for Raven's Head, um, and it's from the 50s and 60s. Um, and the other thing, I walked, I pointed here and walked away. Look at this fish. Aha, uh -huh. look at that Romanian fish. Isn't he cool? Does he have a price on him? No, but he's properly cool. And, and a big one as well. It's a funny little Romanian fish. Look at this one. He's cute. There's no price, but look at the size of the mouth. Is he supposed to be upright? Ah, uh, yeah, he's a vase, that's why. He was looking a bit odd. Well, he looks odd anyway, but that's quite nice. That's a really sweet one. There's not much else in the way of glass here. Bit of case glass here. It's hand blown, there's no markers or anything. Um, yeah, ashtray. Yep. Yeah. Nice ashtray here. 
uh, cased bubble bubble control and um, looks like Bell St Lambert. I will show a few things. Look at how the bubbles are really all small and roughly the same size. When it's white fries, the bubbles are small at the bottom, big at the top. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'll show you a reference for that. So I haven't been able to find this um, ashtray exactly, but look at these examples. This is um, down as Bowser and Lambert, and this, look at the little bubble there. They're really, they're very even. This one's got a label on it, so you know this is right. They're very kind of even, the bubbles, and um, small. And let me switch and show you what I mean by the white fries ones. If I can find an example. Can you see the bubbles are bigger and they're smaller in the middle and um, get bigger as they're going out. I mean, these are, these are quite small, but you get the idea. They're kind of, they get smaller, they get bigger. and But overall, the white fries bubbles tend to be um, bigger. Look at that one. That's a white fries one. You can see this bars here. You can see the bubbles in that. So yeah, so when you're looking at the white fries ones, the bubbles tend to be bigger. Some of these things I don't think are white fries on here. People just label everything as white fries if they possibly can. So um, anyway, so that's what I was talking about. That's why I think it's Bowser and Lambert. I might be wrong. I haven't been able to find an exact match for that ashtray. There's something interesting here. Um, so I've been saying these are Murano, but you know for a fact, Astuni International. Um, mouth blown handmade Murano style made in Italy. So Yeah, so they're not actually I've seen them with Murano written on though. But Murano style. So now that I know it's Astuni International I'm trying to figure out. So when I search for Estuni International, um, I've got this page here, which tells you a bit about them, saying they're founded in 1976, etc. That they're doing make manufacturing gifts and things. Um, but I couldn't actually get Estuni.com to work as a website. So um, here on the contact details, it's got Estuni.it, which is for Italy. So, um, yeah, so I went to Stuni IT, let me show you, and I got this. Um, but in the corner, it says buy this domain, which means that Stuni IT is not, not no longer owned by Stuni, which might mean that Stuni doesn't exist anymore. And then also on that thing, it said it was in Rosano, and... Um, yeah, so here's a map. I had a look. There's Venice and there's Rosano. So it's in the same region, but it's, it's actually not Murano because Murano is like an island somewhere close to Venice. I'm not sure exactly where, but somewhere in there, um, in the lagoon. So, so yeah, there you go. Um, so those glasses, as I've been previously saying on all these things, are Murano because I can see Murano made in Italy in big words. Um, but when you read the small print and translate it into English, um, it's not. So, as I said, it was a voyage of discovery. Some things got really murky, worse than, you know, I've gone backwards. I thought, yeah, yeah, I've got this, you know, the glass with the rough coloured texture pieces and the gold bands. I thought, yeah, I'm getting this pinned down. It's Franco-Belgian, blah, 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 blah. And then everything just got blown apart with the two things that I found marked. It's made in France, made in Italy. Just go, like, oh God. And then also after I did the last video, someone popped up and said, oh yeah, they make that in America. I'm just going, oh no, oh no. But it is what it is. However, there were some things that I've seen as Murano. I've not really looked. It just says Murano made in Italy. And I just thought, yeah, that's, it. that's Italian then. I mean, it's Murano, so nice. And um, yeah, so I looked at it a bit more carefully this time, translated to the thing, and it says it's Murano style, still made in Italy, 
and I managed to find, then find something with a paper label on it, with a company and everything. And and um, so I've even found where it's made. It's near Murano. It's near Venice, but it's not Murano. And um, yeah, I think it looks like the company's now defunct. Um, but yeah, so that's interesting. It's it's they emblazoned Murano in big big letters, and um, but the small print says style. Yeah, tricky in Italian, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that was fun working that out. And um, anyway, so as usual, I will put. Um, the address and all the links to uh, the bakehouse in the description and uh, all the references as well they will also be in the description and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this I enjoyed making it because I love a bit of discovery learning new things and um, yeah so remember to like and subscribe because I've got to say that because I'm a youtuber like and subscribe and um, yeah thank you bye